welcome to Fiber Town. This is episode 198. It's the 24th of August, 2017, and Alice is here. Hi, Al. Pop right up when you hear me talking to the computer. We're so glad to be with you chatting about everything woolly and crafty. Um, did I say I'm on my porch? I am. Don't touch the mouse, please. No, that is not for you. I'll show you what she's sniffing at later on. Hi, pretty girl. So welcome. I have so many things to share with you today. Stop. Stop it. You just made the mouse fall. Sit down. Good girl. Sorry about that. There's something kind of edible. It's not for you though, sweetie. Can you come here where people, people can see how noble you look? Sit down. Sit. Sit. Oh, what a good girl. Can you shake? Shake. Look, I have something edible. You're supposed to shake. Shake. Good girl. Stay. Ooh. Well, this has just gone downhill immediately. Sorry. The mouse, the computer mouse is on the floor. The dog. Okay, fine. I will just show you. This is blue corn from the garden. This is Hobie blue corn. Is this why you're here? I was going to show you this in acquisitions. I grew two little tiny, a half a ear and a, and a mini ear of blue corn for dying. I got these seeds in a swap last year um, from Infric can't remember your real real life name but she's an amazing crafter and she sent me some seeds from her dye garden I also have coreopsis Dyer's coreopsis that has flourished in my garden but I'm going to save these and this was a question does anyone out there know how I use these to dye do I just put them in a pot and mash them up and see what happens do I need to add any additional chemicals Tell me your knowledge, because the internet is very spotty on how to use this to dye. It makes a purple dye, from what I can tell. Hopey blue corn. You want to get one last sniff? It's not for you. I knew you do love corn, but that's for mama to dye with. Ugh. Sorry about this. You know, this is actually about the third time I've started this podcast. I'm just going to keep going with it. As I was saying, I have tons to share with you today. A couple businessy things up front, which I'm kind of sorry about. Maybe I'll do them since it's taken us so long to get started already. Maybe I'll do them later. Um, but one thing I do have to mention is the Summer of S. Uh, it's got about a week to go. I will close the thread sometime on the 1st of September. And it's an amazing knit along. I really super enjoy it. Um, I don't know if you can see it in my eyes here, like me putting language together. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Hence, coffee. Um, oh, we have a new prize for the Summer of S. The talented and generous Mina Phillip, who's the knitting expat, has donated this pattern, the color blender, um, shawl and wrap, scarf and wrap. And yeah, thank you, Mina, if you are watching. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern, stash buster. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. So yeah, let me just set that right there. Uh, so that has been added to the many, many prizes that I will be awarding for the Summer of S. Um, can you see? Can you see down in the corner? That is the dog trying to get at my corn again. She knows better than to take it. She's, she's not that ballsy. You know I'd be angry. Um, okay. Um, thank you for getting in touch after the last episode. I have to say that I really love that kind of post few days uh, after an episode where I get lots and lots of feedback, lots of people get in touch, say thank you for the episode, comment, leave questions, um, drop their knowledge uh, about the related to topics we spoke about on a previous podcast. So I'm looking forward to getting this podcast up and then having those sort of that period of maybe even new people subscribing, people um, just chatting. That always gives me a really lovely boost and uh, it's one of the perks of podcasting for me. So thank you. If you um, choose to get in touch, take that time to make, you know, make the effort to do that. If you don't and you're just a watcher, thank you for just watching the podcast and hanging out with me. Um, so what else do I need to tell you? Um, I'm doing a de-stash, a small de-stash of my 
30 Madeline Tosh Unicorn Tails. I have all of the colorways. There are 30 of them. That's there are over 50, skein, 50 yards per skein, so it's a significant amount of yarn. Every single colorway. It's sort of a reflection of my changing tastes in yarn that this just doesn't fit me anymore. They're pristine, they're beautiful, the colors are amazing, um, but it's just not a base I want to knit with. So I collected those over a period of about a year and a half. And see my Instagram for information, uh, which is Fibertown with an RE, if you want to look into getting those for your collection. Because a lot of people like knitting with this yarn, and it's just, for me, I just don't. Which is sad, because the colors are gorgeous. So, I think I'm going to talk about, I'm going to save the rest of the business for later on, and if you want to stick around for that, that would be lovely. It is about um, my Etsy shop and a special sort of bag sponsorship I'm doing. So let's get on with the other stuff. Oh, I do. Sorry. One last businessy thing. At least you get to look at Alice while I mention it. Um, the, the previous few episodes have not made it to iTunes. So if you're seeing this and you um, only watch on iTunes, uh, this one will go to iTunes. But due to technical issues, with my Spain recordings and the last recording I did, which I did with my new phone. <clears throat> there it is right there. Um, that's just not making it to iTunes, period. So hopefully you can, stop it. Hopefully you can, there's no more porn. Hopefully you can watch it at some point. Um, I know YouTube has this new YouTube Red, <coughs> which always sounds like an adult movie theater to me, but whatever. Um, where you can save things offline and watch them later. So that might be an option for you. You know, you can do like three month trial for free if you don't have the, um, the internet to do YouTube at home. Alrighty, let's talk about FOs. So I have FOs, I have works in progress always. Uh, I have sewing, I have spinning, and Acquisitions. So, all right. Or, uh, let's let me just show you mine. My first depot. It's kind of, you can see that it's not finished, 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 as they say on the Knit More Girls podcast. This I knit this in a day. This is Noro Kurian yarn. It is the Lane Splitter skirt, which was a free pattern on Knitty. So it's knit on the bias. Gosh, dog. Knit on the bias. Um, and then you do this sort of fold over, you, you seam it up the side, it's really fun to knit. You seam it up the side, you do a fold over elastic, I can't remember who the designer is, but lane splitter, all one word, it's on knitty. Uh, four skeins of Noro, which is how much you put into a scarf. I really haven't finished it yet. I'm still counting it finished. I look like a sausage. It has been stuffed into its casing when I wear this, sadly. I might offer it to a super skinny friend. Um, and that's why I didn't initially knit this when it came out. Now, I just should have knit it bigger. But I ran out of yarn anyway, so I think I'm just going to call it good and see if a friend wants it. Um, I'm a little bit sad. It was very fun to knit. You use two different colorways, but you can play around with it. So because it's not on the bias, it's supposed to have plenty of stretch. It is just not flattering. It is pretty skinny. That was the lane splitter. It did give me excellent stash dash yardage, and I don't have a final tally. You know I'm doing my own stash dash competition, which ends September 1st for me. So I will give you the tally, the final tally then. Another FO is, this was almost finished last time I podcasted, The Summer Rain by Renata Yerkes from the Len Magazine number two. This is knit out of Shackleton yarn. It fits very well. The Shackleton is drapey and shiny and it's got a halo and I really love this sweater. Here's the back. It has a split sort of 
dipped hem. The back has this eyelet panel. Um, there are plenty of things that I've already said about this pattern and this design. Uh, more about the pattern than the, than the design itself, the pattern writing. Um, and you know what? It's been so long since I found it off that I don't even <laughs> remember the details of it. But I'm very excited for the weather to turn and I can start wearing this. The final FO is a pair of socks. This is um, a Regia, Regia, Arnie and Carlos design line. And I put the details, like the colorway number, on my Ravelry page. This is pair nine for the year. I wore them a little bit this morning, but they're not for me. They're for my son for his 10th birthday. And the second sock kind of flew off the needles. Um, and I just want to take a moment to wax poetic about my sock knitting. My very first pair of socks, I try, I knit it toe up, knit them toe up. Um, and was very excited to be knitting socks, but didn't really enjoy it. Uh, and the other problem was that I used Malabrigo sock which has sock in the name, but I, I just didn't know my yarns. I was a baby knitter and thought I was going to knit socks out of probably a three-ply superwash merino. I think they wore through on the second or third wear. So it was extremely disappointing and yeah, they didn't they didn't fit right I think that your your initial pairs of socks they just don't it takes time to perfect your sock making your sock recipe I think I've knit I've knit over 60 pairs thanks to Ravelry I can keep track um, it may be more than that it's at least 60 so I, I didn't enjoy the sock making process but I really loved wearing the product I loved it so much so I think it has, I've realized it's become the embodiment of a practice for me. Um, in that it's something I do on a regular basis in order to achieve a specific result. Like yoga or running. However, As I am working towards that result, which is a great pair of hand-knit socks, which is very wonderful to wear, um, like nothing else, really, the process itself has become beneficial to me. And it was a process I didn't enjoy initially, but I kept at it because I wanted the end product. Um, the end product of running might be better fitness yoga might be better flexibility and fitness and calm and peace in your life so the practice of knitting socks and I knit at least a pair a month has given me not just the sock product which is wonderful but the benefits of going through the process and I've come to appreciate the process and enjoy it and invest in it um, over those 60 pairs of socks, I finally got in there. I think I got there a while ago, but I hadn't thought about it in these terms until recently. Um, but I hope I don't lose that sort of investment in the process. I don't think I will because I think once you, once you have sort of delved into a practice of something, it's there. If you, if you keep going, it, you will keep reaping the benefits. So, yeah. Socks, meditation, uh, structure to your knitting, structure to your knitting life and your life in general. And I've had a lot of things go wrong with my knitting in the past 10 days or so, but I can always rely on a pair of my vanilla recipe socks um, to not give me trouble. So it's, it's like the rock of my knitting. All that talk about socks and I neglected to show my new cast on. These are 
Fruit Loops by Fiber Nymph Dye Works. It's her bounce base, wool nylon blend, plus um, oh, cuff, heel, and toe out of some wool nylon that I dyed myself. Yeah, just a gray. This is a yarn I coveted for a very long time and I've stashed it for a while, quite a while. And it was time. It was time to knit me some fruit loops. So I'm just knitting a short leg. I'm already on the, and that took an evening really fast. And now I'm doing some gray for the heel flap. And that's in one of my handwoven project bags that I need to make some of those for my Etsy shop as well. I know these are popular. So that is my current, my 10th pair of socks for the year. Okay. Other things on the needles, I have a sweater that needs to be ripped out. I mentioned knitting woes. This is not so much a knitting woe, but I'm designing it as I go. Actually, I'm writing it down um, and designing it. I have the design in mind, but I think I need to make some changes. So this is some hand-spun Rambouillet, it's a three-ply. And I dyed it with avocado pits. So it's a very pale blush. You've seen this yarn before. I'm just knitting it anyway without re-dyeing it. I think that it'll be all right. Um, and if it isn't, then I'll over-dye the whole garment. But yeah, I want to make a raglan, a top-down raglan sweater with a cable detail um, on at either raglan, at each raglan. So. I think I need to cast on a few more stitches and I need to do the short rows to raise the back neckline a little differently because they pooch out a little bit too much and they were just too rapid so I need to rip I think I'm gonna rip all the way back and just start again um, I did try it on and like had someone put some weight on this as the sweater would behave when I'm wearing it because of the there would be extra, extra weight from the weight of the garment, but it needs redoing. Um, so I'm going to take that opportunity to type out the beginning of the pattern, and I don't think this is not potentially a publishable pattern, but um, I wanted to write it down anyway. So it's really beautiful hand spun, if I do say so myself. It's some of the more the most, I guess. Um, professional looking hand spun I've done. Mill spun looking hand spun. Not completely perfect, which I do not want, but it's pretty darn good. <clears throat> so yeah. I wanted it to have, I want this sweater to have a fitted upper body and then I think I'm going to go up a needle size after the armholes to get a more flowy fabric for the rest of the sweater. So yeah some of my Rambouillet. What else? I think that's it for works in progress. No, I have one more work in progress. This is the Hay um, Cowl. And I need to look up the designer of this particular item. Uh, Hay is spelled H-E-I. And it's by one of the Olgas. It's by the Olga that's local to me. Wait, I have, I have another sweater on the needles as well. Um, is it Olga Jazzy? Anyway, it's spelled, okay, my, my Goodreader app is acting up. Um, I got this yarn from Fiberspace a while back, maybe, oh, quite a while back, maybe three years ago. Um, show you. If, here's the picture of the design. And I actually, I almost never do this, but I got the exact colorway of one of the shop samples. It's a great colorway. So this is Olga Baraya Kafelian. This is Freya. Um, Ombre Grande. And this is a fingering weight. And I think, I'm holding it double because I think the pattern calls for a light worsted. DK. Um, and 
I just can't follow the chart apparently. <laughs> so I've done some ripping and then I've done some coming to terms with things that aren't perfect, but they are good enough. And now that I think it'll be fine, I'll start trying to follow the chart better. It's very, it's got a lot of stitches, but I like how this kind of looks, it's not look like statue, like a primitive statue with the, the two eyes and mouth. Anyway, um, it's quite, I think it's got, I think I've got a nice gauge going. Uh, oh, sorry, this is lace weight. They didn't have the particular yarn in the colorway that I wanted, so I went with this. The green is never ending. It is lace weight, so I guess I should expect that, but um, it's gonna be a long, a long project. And so this Freya is a wool nylon blend, and it's, oh, it's a lot of yards. You know what, I may have to break this yarn. Yeah, once I get to about a third of the height of this, I'll probably have to break the yarn. So I'm, I'm a little bit wary of yarns that have, that look like they have been dyed in a sock blank and then unraveled and caked like this because I find that at least one, I knitted with one once. It wasn't the wandering wool one. Hers are really nice. It was a different one and I just felt like the yarn was lifeless I don't know like it had been ripped and it had been knit and ripped and then dyed and washed and it had just been through too much already so but this one is fine it's quite nice so I'm pulling from the outside of one and the inside of another yeah showing you guys makes me think I'm gonna have to do some yarn management that is the second to last project. The very last project I have on the needles is this. And I cast on this morning um, on US 6s. I should say the hay is being knit on US 5s. US 6s, four, mil four millimeter needles. And this is the very beginning of a breezy cardigan. My second breezy cardigan by Hannah Fetting. My first breezy cardigan is going on, it's at least six years old maybe going on seven and it's just such a staple and I have it in a mustard color um, Volmiza and I just I think it's time to make number two so I'm using Blacker St. Kilda lace weight yarn and it is gonna take a while to knit this sweater it took me a year to knit the first one I may knit this in the round. It's a cardi. It's got an open front sort of waterfall style. It's just so wearable and cozy. I just wear it almost all year round. But I might, after I divide for the armholes, I might knit it in the round and steek it. I might do that. I'm going to see how it goes. Because because it has extra fabric, it has like, it's, it's like knitting practically an, an extra sweater front. The one panel, this panel comes over to here, and this panel comes over to here. Uh, so yeah, it's like knitting more than an extra sweater front. So being able to do stockinette in the round would be extremely wonderful. Um, instead of purling back those enormous rows. So this is a really amazing yarn so far. I'm kind of in love, and I'm taking the ball band off to tell you a bit more about it. So this is a very limited yarn run because of the sheep. Um, <clears throat> so it's an outer, they're from the Outer Hebrides, um, the Borore and Soe sheep. Um, and then they're, those are, just look them up, super primitive, small animals. So, you know, the fleece yield is pretty small to begin with. <coughs> um, and then they're blended with Shetland. I'm in love. This is just the kind of yarn I want to knit these days. It's not like thrilling in the skein, but it makes a durable and wearable garment, something you could wear. Hopefully I'll get 10 years out of this one. Um, so this is the Isle of Dune, Dun colorway. And so it is a lace weight and 
and knitting it on US sixes, which is typical of Hannah Fettig's garments, small yarns on larger needles. And they've got great drape. So I'm knitting the second smallest size. And just I feel like it'll fit me better in the shoulders. And then the sweater has so much uh, fabric around that I don't think it'll be an issue um, to knit that size where I probably could go up a little bit, but it'll be fine. So I have this stitch marker that I could not resist getting because I love me the Harry Potter. I'm a, I'm a true fan. I don't talk about it much here, but it's been 20 years now that I've been a fan. So very excited about this. It's simple, um, but I'm so glad to have, have it cast on. All right, um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me just take a moment before I talk about my sewing and spinning. Have you guys watched the Dunkelgrün podcast? Her name is Anna Dunkelgrün, um, spelled the German way. She, I think she's Austrian and she lives in Switzerland. And she's a chemist, so I really appreciate her background when she talks about dyeing and fiber in general, um, she goes into some detail and I love it. She geeks out and it's wonderful to watch. Um, she's a spinner, she knits with her hand spun. So I just, I've enjoyed sort of watching her back episodes. I think she has 10, 10 at the moment. So Dunkelgrün, D-U-N-K-E-L-G-R-U-N, which means dark green. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. Um, I have new glasses. I just like to share. They're pint glasses. I'm going to drink a pint of beer tonight out of my pint glasses. All right, so let's talk about sewing. I have my, I have a visitor. Sit down. There's nothing else for you here except for a cuddle. I have my first Alabama Channon skirt panel completed. And I'm in the process of finishing the painting on the other three. I ran out of white paint to mix with the black to make this gray paint. But you guys, I finished the painting. Sorry, not the painting. The stitching of the very first panel. And it's much lighter than I anticipated. What do you think, Al? What do you think? If I peek, you're not a toddler. Okay, well, I'm doing that. I really can't wait to wear this. Does it smell good? Oh, <laughs> uh, there's the backside. Yeah, I was concerned that this needs trimming, obviously. I was concerned that this would um, be too heavy because of the two layers of fabric that you can see here. It's not at all. I think it's going to be. And I ordered more um, thread. This is the co button thread, button craft thread by Coates and Clark. And the Alabama Channon website sells it. And I also needed to buy fold over elastic uh, in the dimensions that they specify. Because um, there's so much work going into this skirt. I want to do, I want to do it as by the book as I can, by the Alabama Channon book, <laughs> which does have lots of room for your own creativity. Um, but I just need to say it was charming getting a package from them. Things were just packaged in a really lovely way. Um, the display was great. So that was fun. Um, all right. So the other thing I've been sewing is this. I just made a muslin of the Lark Tea by Greenland Studio. And I love their knit patterns. The other one is the the Linden Tee, which is more of a sweatshirt style, raglan style. This is a set in, well, no, it's not really a, it's sort of a set in sleeve. But maybe not totally because you, you put the sleeve in and then you do the side seams. So I am doing this view. This is the view I'm wearing, rather, um, but with short sleeves. And it's the easiest, it's the easiest to cut out, actually, because just front, a back, and a sleeve. Um, and I 
love a good boat neck. Now I used a really cheap jersey to see about see if I liked the fit of this particular size, and I do. The jersey it was like a under a three dollar a yard purchase, so it really does cling, and I wasn't able to do the neckline as as neatly as I wanted. But it was a good learning, learning. Um, so, and now I know that um, I sewed the size ten for the top, and it fits fairly well. It's a bit too much drape. I'm going to use a heavier jersey for the subsequent versions. That's it for sewing. Um, spinning, I, I've been spinning, I haven't been spinning much in the past week, but I did spin up the week before that some of my Hog Island fleece sewing threads. So I have three bobbins of the fleece that I shared with Sarah Pomegranate. <coughs> It's a very short staple, disorganized staple, um, but I think it's going to make an amazing yarn. The, I think this particular sheep was raised in Maryland by a 4-H'er who who is the daughter of a very well-known shearer in our area. Actually, she's well-known over the, all over the country, I think. She does travel out to some of the bigger ranches, like in Montana and Idaho, to do shearing. Um, and her name is Emily Chamberlain. And so this was raised by her daughter Lydia as a 4-H project. And it's a very, you've heard the story of Hog Island before. Um, I've told it here many times. If you haven't heard of Hog Island, look it up. If you're brand new, it's a really fun breed. It's got a lot of spring and bounce. It's got a sponginess. I'm going to do a two-ply, and I might knit a garment out of it. Uh, that's it for spinning. Um, let's see what else we want to tell you. I have acquisitions and Ask Fiber Town and a couple random bits to tell you about. So acquisitions. If you live in the United States and you have a Joann's Fabrics, maybe twice a year they do a 60% off coupon. And I've used this to, and it usually lasts for like three days. I've used it to buy Ginger scissors, fabric shears, um, a cutting mat that was a bit pricey. And I didn't really need anything in particular this time around, but it's hard to resist the siren song of the 60% off coupon. So my daughter and I went to Joann's, and I got this because those fruity knitting people interviewed her. I say those fruity knitting people. I very much enjoy their podcast, and <clears throat> I'm a patron of their podcast. So yes, I decided to get Nancy Marchant's, Marchant, Marchant's book, Knitting Fresh Brioche, because I confess that brioche gives me the collie wobbles. I've knit it once. And it took a bit of learning. Uh, yeah, but I want to knit things like this. And it's funny because I didn't particularly enjoy my brioche knitting. I did a little section in the exploration station. But I need to, I need to, I need to take on the challenge, basically. And I think a lot of it has to do with how it's explained <clears throat> in some patterns. I, I just, it seems a bit, a lot of the verbiage is superfluous and just gets in the way. So I finally found a pattern that explained it succinctly and it was no problem. So hopefully that book will help out. And I, try, I tend not to buy technique books. But I also went online and looked at YouTube videos, and they did not help me. Sometimes I just need it written down in a clear way. Um, because on YouTube, you might run into someone who doesn't knit in the same style that you do, and so that element throws something into, you know, a variation into the mix that makes things even more confusing. <clears throat> so I did show you the blue corn. Let me show you again, see if she comes back. Yes, as I was mentioning at the beginning, it doesn't smell like anything to me. Tell me, it kind of matches my hair. Tell me if you 
have any info for me on dyeing with blue corn. I probably don't have enough to dye very much yarn, but that's okay. I like to experiment. I think I might be dyeing my Icelandic hand spun with some marigold and goldenrod. I think I, I think I would love to get a nice golden dyed onto gray. I'd really enjoy that, as you guys probably know. Now, ask Fibertown. Um, the question last week <clears throat> was very thoughtfully responded to by um, Kimberly, who is an excellent weaver, and she is, <coughs> excuse me, she, is she knit country still? She might be shop teasel. Teasel knits, teasel knits on, um, on Fibertown. So the question last time was, what kind of breed yarns do you use for warp in, in weaving? And I didn't have a great answer, but I put it out there that, you know, I know there are much more experienced weavers out there and they should feel free to contribute info. And Kimberly really did. Um, so what Kimberly says, and she answered in the 197, episode 197 thread, is that the question that this weaver could ask herself, the question needs to be, to be rephrased to include the type of project the warp yarn is wanted for, which is really wise. I mean, that goes for knitting too. That would help to focus an answer. Another way to get an answer is to ask for a project suggestion based on the characteristics of the yarn to be used. If a person really wants a breed specific yarn to get started with, I'd totally go for Romney as a great wool breed to start with Start with for a warp. It's stable, not too sticky and versatile. Finn or Gotland would be awesome too. If a brand is wanted, Harrisville carries some great weaving wool yarn on combs. Um, if she could tell the question to answer one thing, it's to practice with the yarns you want to use. Get to know what tension to hold it at, how close or far apart the ends need to be set from each other, and what tools will carry the weft through your warp the best. I know lots of people resist sampling for weaving just like we resist doing gauge swatches, but it teaches so very much, saving time, frustration, and money in the long run. So what kind, I guess the question to ask is what kind of project do you want to make? And that could give you, help you focus your answer on what, you got, what breed to use for the warp, or just use the warp you want and figure out how to best weave with it by doing some sampling. Um, and she also says that, um, you know, you need to think about the spin, the type of heddles you have in your loom, and again, the end project. Woolen spun yarns of any ply and finer fibers can get beat up by heddles, which is why those might matter, but changing how the loom is warped can reduce or eliminate that problem. And another viewer said something really interesting as well about um, being able to look at a sort of um, Iron Age, or not prehistoric, but uh, definitely historic, but ancient weavings. And historians can tell where the weaving originated or where the person who did, or where the weaver originated by looking at the type of warp and how it was spun, how, which direction it was spun, and then which direction it was plied. Um, and I think that was, they've done that on, they were able to determine that some weaving found in Iceland was actually woven by someone who had originally been born in the British Isles because of the way the warp and the weft was, was constructed, the yarns themselves. Um, and we know that a lot of, um, you know, the original Icelandic settlers did take um, captives from the British Isles and took them to the new settlements in Iceland. So yeah, really great topic for a question. And there is another question this week, and it also has to do with weaving. An extra leg, who has a very cute Yorkshire Terrier on her Ravatar, has a question about my scrappy weaving. She wants, she knows that I balled up my various scraps using the magic knot method. Did I weave the knots into the fabric or cut the yarn every time I switch to a new yarn and weave in the yarns up? weave in the ends afterward. So she's thinking of doing a scrappy weaving. And 
I made massive magic cakes. I still have quite a few. Uh, and I use these for both warp and weft. And I think I had said that I wouldn't really advise using them for warp, but I did it anyway. And the reason, it did present some problems for the warp, but I just kind of plowed through. So yes, the knots were in the warp and they were in the weft. And I just wove them in. And I'll show you a close up of the blanket. It makes zero difference for me um, in terms of the look and the feel of the blanket. Some of the knots were a bit big going through the heddles, um, and some of them, maybe three or four of them, did come untied just from the friction of the heddles. I just retied them. <laughs> um, so this is the blanket. Let me see, is that the right or wrong side? So I did. That was the wrong side I was showing you. And I say it's the wrong side because I mattress stitched two panels together right here. Um, but you can see, I apologize for the construction noises. You can see where there are knots that pop up. Here's one right here. I don't know if that was a warp or weft knot, um, but it really doesn't bother me. This whole thing was magic knot. Warp and weft. And it is, it's, it's one of the best things I've ever made. <laughs> I really love it. You can see this is a warp thread that's gotten snagged after the fact. Probably by the dog and her, and her toenails. Which got super long when we were away traveling. And I've been trimming them back bit by bit. But um, sort of every few days I do a little trim on her nails, but they did get long and they snagged in the blanket. Anyway, it doesn't make much of a difference at all, except in, you know, the fact that the warp was a bit tricky with the knots at times. So let's see. I hope that helps extra leg when you go and do your scrappy weaving. They are a lot of fun. Um, if you're using fingering weight scraps and you want to magic knot them, just maybe use a larger heddle and have a looser weave. And that way the knots are less likely to get stuck or sort of un undone. Okay. What do I need to show you and talk about before we say goodbye? Two things festival season's coming up. I'm 98% sure that I am not going to Rhinebeck this year. I've been the past three years and I'm okay with not going. I'm a little bit sad. Some friends I've made this year uh, that live abroad are going to be there and I won't be able to see them. But it's not in the cards. We have other things going on this year, but still I'm a little sad. I'm thinking about doing a Rhinebeck, a Rhinebeck chagrin, I don't, Rhinebeck sadness swap. So um, maybe swapping with a few of you um, to time those swap packages for about the time of Rhinebeck so that we can have a little extra fun, fun mail. Um, tell me what you think. Um, if you'd be up for that, let me know in the episode thread. I would not organize a swap with other people, but if you guys want to swap, organize that yourselves in the in the thread that would be that would be great I probably want to swap with two or three people personally uh, and then anyone else who wants to go ahead and do a swap you guys could figure that out so yeah Rhinebeck sadness swap do you want to do that I am gonna go to Shenandoah that's practically in my backyard and I really really love it so the other thing is um, has to do with Socktober, which is a knit along that is in probably the third or fourth year. The Carolina Fiber Girls podcast hosts this, and it is really a massive knit along. It goes all through the month of October, and it, it's sock related. Um, I'm going to be a sponsor this year. I'm very excited. And what that means is that um, I'm going to have a special Socktober bag in my Etsy shop. Um, and if you use a sponsor's item in your knitting, you get bonus points. It's a point-based knit-along. 
So if you want bonus points, you might like one of my October bags. I adore these bags. <laughs> these are so much fun to make. They are a drawstring. So let me tell you about these bags. Um, they're about a foot tall and um, let's see. they're about 10 inches wide. They, they have been holding this project all, both skeins, so they're ample, they have ample room for, um, ample room for a sock project. So here is an example of these two, these two balls of yarn in this bag, and then this goes in there as well. So yeah, it's ideal for a one to two skein project. There's everything in there. Now the fabric is a home decorator weight cotton, which means that it's sturdy, and this one hasn't been. I think like fringe, fringe supply bag, the field supply bag. The, the gray cotton softens a lot with wear, and I should have the one I've been using. See, that's the second time I've done the drawstring. So when you get these, they kind of are stiff at first. And then they really soften up in a lovely way with use, and they're very sturdy. Um, and then in the center panel, you have this cotton and steel um, quilting cotton, which is called Kicks. It's by Melody Miller. So it, it's super fun. So you can get a blue, you also have a pink, and the inside is lined with muslin, either tan or white. So I have a nice stack of these to put up in the shop and they will go up the, what is today? I think these are, are gonna go up Sunday night. So what is that? The, okay, Sunday the 27th. Um, and we'll do that at seven o'clock at night. So that's the update, Sunday the 27th at 7 Eastern Time, U.S. And listen to the Carolina Fiber Girls for um, a coupon code for my Ravelry store. And all these makers and sponsors will have coupon codes for their patterns, for their items in their Etsy shops or their, their shops in general. And just for fun, I made a little pouch. Um, and I use these all the time. This is, um, I, I mainly store earbuds in them, but when I was in Europe, I kept all my change, all my money in one of these, and I put a D-ring on there. Um, I may make some of these to put in the shop as well. We'll see. They're super useful. So, those are my kicks, my Socktober bags. Now, I think, I think that's it. Oh, I did also send one of these to the Carolina Fiber Girls. And if you have purchased one of these from my Etsy shop, um, thank you. These have really been popular. And these are just 100 grams of scrap yarn in 10 yard increments um, for all of your scrap projects. And I know there are a lot of them right now. So yes, thank you for spending time with me today. Um, the dog is completely conked out over there. So it must be time for a nap. I hope your knitting is going well, everybody. Sorry, I have to retrieve the mouse that she dropped earlier. Hope your knitting is going well. I hope you were going well. And until next time, take care. Of course, I can't say goodbye yet because the mouse, there we go. Take care.